versus last year? Uh, I feel good about what we're, what we're working towards. Uh, obviously, we've started and we're a few days in, and uh, we have some guys still recovering in the final stages of recovering from some issues from last season. We have some players who are still to arrive. Uh, so I, still, I feel we're still not quite whole yet as it comes to preparing for the season. Um, but I'm excited about the group that, that we have. We're certainly uh, going to become more dynamic. We're going to be you know, more active. A lot of the things that, that we kept talking about last year are starting to come into, into play with the group that we have. And so we're looking forward to it. The sooner we can get everybody in, the more we can start to really get on the same page, which is going to be a key part of this as well. But uh, for what we want to do, I'm really excited about the group that's shaping up. Can you talk about some of the players that aren't here? When you can expect them to be able to see? Yeah, I mean, it's Ricky should be in next week. He's in the final stages of his rehabilitation and uh, the protocol that he's been put on in, in terms of Spain between our guys and their guys. Just got one more visit with the doc to see where he's at, but he's doing his work there, and then he'll join in. Um, <clears throat> Mickey should be any in any time in the next. Within the next week, I think, he's just in the final getting his passport back to travel. Uh, so, you know, with others, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, yeah, Gaston is just in a return to play. He's probably two or three weeks away from really getting into, like, maximum training stuff, probably three weeks. Uh, Martin is close. I mean, he's gone through parts of training sessions, so I would say within the next week he'll probably be back in uh, into full training. Eric is just, uh, Zav's just been sick, so he'll be back in tomorrow, I think. Um, others, uh, I don't know if there's others, but everybody else, I think, is getting close, you know, with uh, the other guys, the DP guys that everybody's worrying about uh, and thinking about, hopefully, soon. Uh, you know, different circumstances in diff each of those situations, but hopefully not too far down the road. If not, sometime early in February, we start to see those faces. Did Ricky have surgery? He did not. He did not. So the latter part was just some PRP work and, and just some final sort of rehabilitation and, and return to play stuff. So, uh, but it's just been a, it's a healing process, high ankle sprain. Uh, even when he played a few minutes in the last game, you could tell they were still, he was still favoring it and it was still bothering him and that it's just been a long kind of process. So, uh, but he's feeling better now and we'll, we'll, like I said, after this last visit, we'll have him back in, in the mix. Great. Yeah, I think a little bit of all of those things. I think uh, our mindset coming in, and the first thing I said on day one is we're going to be a good defending team uh, because we defend well and we clear off what can be the low hanging fruit and, and some of that, then our position in the table changes significantly and our results change significantly. Uh, I don't think it's just the back line. I think it's a collective thing. I think it is uh, uh, everybody's mentality to defend and everybody's clarity in terms of their role in the defending in certain situations in the game. Inside of that, we all have to individually take care of our own business and not make the errors that sometimes we're making. But it's, I think it's all of the above. When you give up 67 goals or whatever it was, there's a lot of problems that, that all need to be tightened up. And so... Uh, we'd love to cut that number in half, or I mean, then then we're then we're talking. So, but our emphasis in these, for sure, the first couple of weeks and in the last few days is in purely defending. On the defending note, um, a lot of the goalkeeping statistics had you guys at the lower tiers last season. You guys made Novak Djokovic's loan from there. You guys added John McCarthy. Um, is the number one spot up for grabs in goalkeeping, or is it still Jonathan Bonds to defend? No, I think everybody's in competing right now for, for their spot, and it's to show who's the guy that can, uh, is ready and then can help the team. Uh, I don't put last year on the goalkeeper. I, I, I think it's difficult when uh, you're giving up so many chances and you're giving up goals. You know, There's some that Bondi probably could have saved. We can all say that, and there's some that Novak probably could have saved. And, um, but the issue is it's a, it's a collective issue, and it involves everybody, and I think everybody is here to, to compete. Uh, for their spots, it's the beginning of preseason, and guys are going to be uh, expected, and they know that to to deliver and to do their roles properly inside of the collective group. And so, but we've added a little bit more experience. You know, Mickey adds some experience to uh, the back line. You know, John's been in the league for a few years now, and he has some experience. And so we, you know, some of that is that we also give our space for our young players to keep 
keep learning and developing, but we also have some veteran guys who can bring them along. It's a good mix of youth and experience across the back line now, I think. And we've got to... We've got to use our voices too. You know, one of the things that we've really talked about is there's no defending without communication, and that's one of the things that I think we can continue to be stronger is just our information passing from one guy to the next and and uh, and doing a better job there. So again, we could talk defending for hours because we had a lot of gaps. So it's closing up those. But do you have like a number one stand at the moment, or go through the lights? No, it's day three, so I don't feel like I have to have a, a number one. I feel like all these guys should come in and feel like they need to be on top of their game to. Uh, to earn the right to be in the goal. What does, of course, he's had a good career in Japan, but what do you think Mickey actually uh, Very, very good on both sides of the ball. Uh, brings experience, you know. Um, I think another guy in our back line who's, just, who's played a lot of games, who's read a lot of defensive actions, who makes really sound decisions with and without the ball can help us. He also brings a lot of versatility. You can, we can use him wide and in a position on the sideline when we have possession. We can tuck him inside, and he can look like a central midfielder at times, very comfortable. We can even put him in higher, sort of in the gap in attacking positions, depending on how we want to set up on the right side and depending on the relationships and qualities of the players that are around him as well. Or we can hold him back. He's played some center back in his career. We can hold him in a three-man three, three or a build. And so he just brings a load of versatility on, on <clears throat> in possession and quality. Um, but on the defensive side, he just brings a lot of experience in making good sound decisions, defending properly, covering the backside on crossing situation. All these little things where, again, when you're trying to be a better team, you want to close all these little gaps wherever you can. So I think he brings brings a lot of that to, to our group. Did Maya play any role? Did he talk to him? Did you guys use him as an asset? Yeah, I mean, Maya was, we had a few, uh, actually had more than one Japanese right back on our radar. Uh, so whenever you're trying to find out about guys, we always will connect with players who have had some interaction. They haven't had much of a, call it a relationship, but they've certainly played together in the national team picture. So they have, a, Maya had a good understanding of the player uh, and, a base, and a solid understanding of just the guy that we were bringing in. So. Uh, yeah, so Maya was obviously a source of information in that process. Do, do you know if he talked to you? I'm sure he did. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, that's... I, I'm sure he was a part of the process. I, I imagine that uh, at any point you use every resource you can to, to have as many <clears throat> answers, I guess, in the process, you know, to have as much clarity. So uh, I think all those things come together. So I'm sure he played a role in, in all aspects of that side. What are your kind of your expectations for Dan Yovelish this season? Like it's my guess the third full season with the club. Um, last year, a bit disappointing in the box score wise, but what you, conversations you had with him, what you kind of expect from him this year? For me, it's for Dan to become a more complete player. Uh, and, you know, last year we talked about, okay, now he's going to get some opportunities to be a 90 minute player. Uh, I think that's part of it. For me, it's just a more complete player, which means you're still getting your goals and your assists. But you're also doing all the other little things that help the team to be successful on the defending side, on holding up possession at the right times, uh, just connecting inside of the group. Uh, I think given the qualities and, and uh, of the players and the profiles of the players that will be around him, I think he's going to start to see a lot of those chances that he saw the year prior, um, where he's not necessarily fighting for his own space to finish. I think the space will be created and it will be up to him to finish. So I think he'll get his opportunities and I think he'll score goals. The question is, again, for him is, can you stay inside of the details of what you do need to do for 90 minutes and all of those other moments inside the game to help the team to be successful, both with the ball and without the ball and uh, being detail-oriented in, in that aspect? Because that's really, I mean, great strikers. We think about them as guys who score goals, but they do a lot of other things to help the team be successful other than just scoring goals, right? The, um, uh, Will becoming GM of the how has that changed your life? And, uh, and, and has it been a plus for you as a coach, or is there any friction there? Because you were his boss for a while. Yeah, no friction. I mean, this is, uh, at the end of the season, I was asked, you know, about last year. And I said, I have too many things on my plate, right? There's, uh, you know, Dan and I had this discussion. There's just too many things that I was involved with or... Uh, we're on my plate and uh, drawing a little bit of attention here, a little bit of attention there. Uh, and at times, honestly, I felt like I was helicoptering in to coach the team and then helicoptering out to answer some other questions or problems and whatever the case may be. This is, this, you know, is, a, is a great 
sort of adjustment. I don't really care who I who I who's my boss or who isn't my boss. For what I want is the group to be successful. For that to happen, I need to be able to focus on the team uh, and the group, uh, and to make sure and work with Will to make sure the guys that we bring in are guys that are going to fit inside of what we're trying to do uh, and the vision for the team. Um, but it's his job and the guys up there. Their job is to go get go get the players that fit and make sure that uh, we can get the best ones in. Uh, and my job is to put them on the field and help them to to win games. So I think it just it will it puts us all into the positions that can make help the club be as successful as we are supposed to be and need to be. I asked you this uh, on the uh, exit interviews back in November. Sure. Um, so I'm going to ask you again: Has there been any discussion about uh, Robin Fraser joining this team staff in any way, whether it's uh, as a coach or as somebody who's working? Sure. Uh, yes and no, right? Robin and I are close, so we obviously I ask him what's going on in life. He's interviewed for every position there is in the in the league this off season. Uh, you know, we are we've talked the game, we've talked about the team, we've talked about a lot of things. But he, in his mind, too, is in a position where he's focusing on the head coaching position and. And also just doing some things for himself right now in terms of preparing for whatever that next opportunity might look like. Uh, and so f from my perspective, he's there and, and I'm here and we're focused on our, our, uh, our next steps. For me, it's success here. So, you know, would it be a consideration for me? Of course, we, we talked about what that might look like, but it isn't the right moment for, for that to, to take place. For you, this being your fourth season here, um, the Galaxy obviously last season was a bit of a dud. Do you feel pressure now to really Get into performances. Of course, I feel pressure just myself. Like as a guy who, uh, in however many years I've been in league, well over 20, there's not been many moments where I haven't been in the playoffs and haven't had some say in the playoff picture about success. You know, uh, and this last year was a year a year of certainly unique circumstances, but obviously a lot of frustrating and underperforming moments and uh, all the reasons at this point don't matter. It's us closing up those gaps and being successful. But just as a person who is, uh, I would say, used to winning and expect to win, uh, last year was really difficult. So I actually took about a month and just got away and went out and uh, visited some different clubs and just kind of separated from everything just to try to put a lot of that the ideas and my, the things that go through your head when you go through a tough season are, uh, are many and a plenty. And I just tried to, to clear my mind a little bit, reset on the things that we want to focus on this year and, and um, be ready to come in and be the best uh, coach for the group, for the players and for the club. And that's, that's where I'm at right now. Which uh, I spent some time at Chelsea, was at West Ham for a little while, uh, went to Crystal Palace for a bit. Um, what else? I had some of the guys, some of the, our guys were at Liverpool. We're mostly in the London and the, and the EPL clubs. Um, I went to a bunch of games, probably saw 12 maybe uh, between EPL games and, uh, uh, and Europe, Europa games and, and Champions League. So went to a lot of games, watched a lot of teams that I think are uh, in our wheelhouse for what we've talked about in terms of our style of play and things that we would like to do. So it was really, again, just clearing my mind and, and resetting on some very specific details that I think are important, important for us. You clear, you clear your mind by going to more soccer, right? Of course, <laughs> what else would I do? How do you clear it away, away from soccer? Then? Well, I mean, that there's... You're never, I'm never going to get fully away from that, but it was also, I took my family, and so the, you know, the, the boys were with me. Uh, my wife was with me. I, honestly, our family hasn't been away on a vacation other than going home to see our families in Arizona. We haven't been on a, on a vacation in 10 years, if that. So just us getting away and during the days going and enjoying London and different things. We were over in uh, Portugal for a little bit. Uh, it happened to be around my youngest playing in a tournament in Portugal, but uh, just to get away and do something, right? Not to be inside of this building and down here and... Uh, but to be somewhere else, but I, I will never be more than a couple steps away from a game or from uh, from the sport and all that. So it's all good.